What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Mountaintop Motivation Podcast. I'm here with Michelle Ogston. I'm so excited for this conversation. In fact, we were having such a great conversation before we started recording, and I went, wait a second, wait, 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 wait. Let's just start recording. So first of all, Michelle, what's going on today? Hello. Hi. It's, it's already good to be here. I'm glad yeah. we hit record. Yeah. <laughs> so now we can capture the magic for everybody else. Right, right. Because we we're having this great <laughs> conversation, which, by the way, what what was that? What was that uh that song you just introduced me to? The the Ooh, artist and the song? Uh, the cover and the cover of Tom's Diner. Um I only know the singer that's like very powerful, Henningson May. I can't remember the whole band's name though. I can look it up very quickly. Amazing. Kind of put us in the right state for this interview. It, I said, like. it says Annan May Cat Terriet yeah. X Giant Rooks. That's a Something. weird name. I don't know what that is, but there's 57 million people who have watched this. Type in Tom's Diner cover and mm -hmm. You won't be disappointed because that guy's voice was like, that was amazing. Anyway, we were listening to that and then we're like, hey, we just, we got to stop talking and we got to get to this because we both got places to go. But <laughs> I wanted to frame this in a way that, here's how I wanted to frame this. I believe that there are a lot of business people, a lot of people who, and, and it's, every, it's, it's people who have goals of any kind. They, they want to believe in building up their mindset, mastering their mindset. They want to believe in being in touch vibrationally and spiritually with their goals and those kind of things. But they, they tend, what I, what I see from a lot of people is the statement and the feeling of I'll do that stuff after I'm successful or when I have time for when I have time for it after I'm already successful but what you've shown over this last year, and we'll get into the story, like going from just starting to having an incredible coaching business, so much of it has been built on, no, I need to make that the priority first and everything else comes. So that's kind of the frame of this conversation. With that being said, I'm going to stop talking and let you share your <laughs> thoughts. Well, yes. I mean, I, I'm probably biased on this subject. One, I mean, first of all, this is what I study. And so I'm definitely biased. But what I found was that what really changed my level of playing was when I really started tuning into my own energy. And I think this was huge in propelling my business because I think so many times as business owners, um, entrepreneurs, you know, anybody in this industry really we, we collect data, right? Like we throw these nets out and we collect data and we look at stats and we look at analytics, but we don't do the same thing for ourselves. Like when's the last time you did like a data on yourself? Like what's your energy? Like, where's your mindset? What are you cultivating? This, like this tool aligning to the vibration of what you're trying to create is huge. And it's actually what manifesting is. I'm, I'm like cracking the code right here for everybody. Manifesting, people think manifesting is all about like, what do you want and like cultivating what you want. And it's actually tuning into the vibration that you're trying to create mm. and then allowing that to come to you. So, okay. That brings up a great, <laughs> a great conversation. I love that idea, the concept of manifestation and vibrational tuning. Now I have my own thoughts on this, but for someone listening who goes, okay, she's saying words. I don't know what those <laughs> words mean. Can you give us some definitions? Let, let's let's kind of have okay. a few definitions here. So one definition is going to at least definition according to Michelle Ogston. Okay. What is your definition? Let's go with uh, vibration. When you say vibration, when you say tuning into uh, alignment would be another one. And then okay. manifestation. So that's four different things. What do those mean to you? And for someone to have context of when you say those words throughout this, this conversation. Okay. That's a good place. Like we're, we're tuning into what we're talking about. So yes. the first one I'm actually going to start with is manifestation because I think that's the easiest one, which is mm. you're co-creating with the universe. So that's to me, very yeah. simple is like you are all, you are creating and your other partner is the universe or God or source, whoever you you know, resonate with. So you're co-creating. So what is your part in that creation? 
You said vibration. So vibration to me is all about energy. What is the energy you're putting out there? And when I say energy, I mean, not just effort, but what is the vibe? Most people like the vibe better than vibration, the vibe, which Mm. you vibe that you're putting out there. Yeah. And I see this often a lot. If I'm going to give like, can I give a definition? Like an act, like a, like maybe this would help like a picture, paint a picture. So oftentimes people will come to me and be like, well, I am manifesting. I'm doing all the things I'm like, you know, I am meditating. I'm journaling. I'm doing all the things. I really want love in my life. I want a partner so bad. And it's not happening, Shell. It's not happening. And I'm like, okay, well, tell me how you feel about, I'm just going to use heterosexual couples for the sake of this conversation. How do you feel about men? And the person will say, oh, I think all men are, are not good. And I'm like, mm. oh, mm. so your energy is saying that men are not good, but you're really wanting to cultivate that. So you're not in a vibrational, you're not an energy match for what you're putting out. So does that make mm. sense? Totally. It makes absolute sense. You're saying, if you're saying like using that example, because you work with a lot of couples and relationships and people who, who want to work on that aspect of their lives. And you're saying if, if there's a woman who's saying, I want to attract a man in my life, but yet all they are focusing on thinking about, um, all their, their energy and focus is on the problems with men are dot, dot, dot. And then they wonder why they're not attracting that you want. They wonder why they're not attracting the men that they want. And they might say, well, no, I'm, I'm very clear on what I, what I want and I'm just not getting it. It's like, well, it sounds like you're really clear on what you don't want. And, and maybe, maybe by, you know, if we go down one level deeper, if you analyze what you don't want, you can get to what you do want, but you need to get in vibration. You need to be in alignment with Mm -hmm. the one that you want and be focusing there. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's huge. So that's another word. Okay. That's another word you said to me, a tune. I think you said, I said a tune. tuning. Uh, let's see. You, so you said manifestation, you said vibration. I want to talk about alignment and tuning. Alignment is when you are very focused with your intention. So you know what your intention is and you're taking action based on that intention. So mm. alignment is really when you are in manifestation. So you're co-creating and you are setting an intention and every decision you ba- you make is based on obtaining that intention. Mm-hmm. So it can be something simple. I mean, it can be like having peace in your life or it can be building your business or it can be like eating an apple. <laughs> it doesn't mm-hmm. have to be super deep. It's just what actions are you taking then to create that? So would you say tuning and getting into alignment are kind of the same thing? Just kind of using so different words. I would say tuning is more like listening to your own energy. So listening mm-hmm. to your own voice, being still, being quiet, tuning to what is it that you're wanting? What is it that you're desiring? What is it that you're wanting to create? A tuning is like really getting quiet and going inward and like feeling what your vibration is, feeling what your energy is and seeing if that's an alignment with your intention. See, they're all a big circle. Like we just made a little right. soup there. Right, right. <laughs> but I think it's really soup. <laughs> <laughs> right. So <laughs> one thing that you said earlier that I think I want to address at the beginning okay. so that you who are listening or watching right now don't walk away and say, oh, this isn't for me. Um, but that's right. I'm talking to you. That's right. You. I'm talking to you. So when you said... Uh, I like your definition of manifestation, co-creating with the universe. Some people who are more, let, let's, I see them as the same, but let's call them universe people and God people as mm-hmm. in, you know, that's just kind of the wording, the definition. How, what would you say if someone says, well, I'm not really into that whole universe thing. I'm, I believe in God and I'm a faithful person, a church going person. What, how do you deal with that when someone comes to you and has that conversation? I love that. I mean, you know, my background, I was raised both uh, Catholic and Jewish. So I have a very spiritual upbringing, very religious upbringing. And at 16, I started to divert away just because my upbringing was not positive in the religious environment. I still think religion is beautiful. I studied religion. 
Um, and to me, it's just the choice of word that resonates the most with you. So if I have a client that is really into religion, then we just use the word God. I just want to use the word that resonates with most people. So if manifesting feels more comfortable to say I'm co-creating with God, let's do that because that's the word that resonates. I think it's the same thing. It's just the word that people feel more comfortable. Some people don't like the word universe and they like source better. And they're like, oh, I like source. And then for people who are not religious or not believe in anything, that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> mm. How do you handle that's that? A- like if someone, let's say someone is uh, an atheist and you have this conversation, like, is there a way that you handle that? You, you said it's a whole different yeah. conversation. I wasn't even planning on bringing it up. <laughs> Um, it is a whole different conversation because so much of what I talk about is a higher power. So Mm. if I'm with somebody who's not talking about a higher power, we have to go deeper of like, where do they find their inspiration? Where does that come from? How does it feel when they are excited? Where do they feel like that comes from? Like we get into Mm. a lot of deeper conversations about where they find their strength. Where does that source come from? And what I find is a lot of times, at least for the people that I work with, is it's more of a spiritual path with like nature or a spiritual path with themselves. And that's all part of the journey as well. I feel like, I mean, at least in, from my experience, God Mm -hmm. loves us all. So even atheists and for anybody who's out there, who's listening and, you know, the doubting Thomas, I mean, we have a lot of doubting Thomases and that's okay. And that we love them too. So think it's right i i don't know i might get in some hot water saying this but (laughs) i find that more people i find that most people who call themselves atheists if you really get down to it it's more likely that they're agnostic Mm -hmm. it's more likely that they are maybe turned off by religion or had an experience where, where when you really dig down deeper they go, well, there's got to be something higher than us. And if that something is just the way the universe works, it's just, it, it could just be universal laws. It could just be science. It could just be, you know, you, but you look at things and you go, there's certainly something more powerful than me creating this. Now I have mm-hmm. my beliefs and my definitions. And to be honest, those de- definitions and beliefs are quite fluid because I really like the analogy of the keyhole. Have you heard the keyhole and the elephant? Have you heard of that idea? Yeah, but tell everybody else. Okay, well, there you go. But it's (laughs) the idea that if we, we all look through a keyhole and on the other side of this door, there's an elephant. And if my keyhole is over here, I'm gonna be like, oh, wow, this is this giant, these giant powerful legs. And someone else's keyhole might be closer and they might say, oh, it's like rough and and kind of scaly and someone else might. And the point is, is that's just describing an elephant. But if you think about it from all these different perspectives of different cultures, I don't know. What if we've all been given a little piece of the puzzle and culturally we need to come together so that we can put that puzzle together and truly understand? I don't know. That's just kind of my thoughts on it. I don't think I think it's a beautiful thought. I love that thought. I think it's beautiful. And how does this relate to business? Let's bring that back. <laughs> That's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you Let's for conducting back. this interview. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, so let's let's get into that idea then. So okay. if we're looking at this and saying, how is your spiritual connection? How is your spiritual connection related to the specific business success that you have had over the last year, year and a half? I mean, a year and a half ago, you were at the point to where you were making a few hundred dollars a, a month. Yeah. You're, you're making mm-hmm. a few hundred, less than a thousand dollars a month. And sometimes you know, less than a couple hundred a month. And then now you're at the point to where you're doing $30,000 a month and people would say, oh, well, that must have been about the strategy that you implemented. That must have been about this process that you did. And from your perspective, it's no, it's when I got in alignment, things just started happening. So kind of tell us about your perspective on what, what is it that made it click to start working and becoming successful? I think most importantly, it was when it was not clicking. (laughs) 
Mm. It wasn't clicking. It was, and I think there was a moment really where you, I think everybody has this moment or at least probably at some point, because I've heard people even who've been very successful and then get to this point of like, wait, how did I do that? And I think we get very caught up in the how, how do I find clients? How do I do this? How do I launch? How, how, how we get in a lot of that masculine energy of how, and we forget to surrender for a minute, a minute and just Mm -hmm. be in that. And so when I found that things were, I mean, they were kind of working and I was making, I got to a point where I was making like, you know, three a month, 3000 a month. And, you know, I mean, I'm not going to complain. That's great. But there was a point of like, am I playing coach or am I, am I a coach? Like, am I doing this? And there's a really powerful saying, um, that's what you resist will present persist. And so, I kept resisting, like showing up bigger and playing bigger. I kept playing smaller. I, I just wasn't really there. And I just took a moment to surrender and I got very, very quiet, lost, you know, quiet to a scary point of losing a lot of money and just started to show up for what was up. (laughs) So that's something Gabby Bernstein says. I can't steal that. That is definitely a Gabby Bernstein thing of showing up for what's up in the sense of when I got quiet, I could hear more about what was it? What was my mission? What was I really needing to lean into? Where was I needing to show up and just surrendering to that? And it became very easy then to be in alignment with this is where I need to show up as energy work. This is where I need to be is in relationships. I mean, it just was so fluid. It just came together very quickly and just like one domino knocked over like 10. And so for Mm. me, then all the how answered itself. It just rolled out because it became very much a mantra every morning of Mm. how, you know, let me lead, show me calling on the universe. And it just became very easy. I think one of the holdbacks that people have with manifestation and alignment and this con- kind of conversation is they think, well, it can't just be that you got to do something too. But what you're saying is not that you didn't have to do something. It's that getting in the alignment made the how easy because you knew exactly what to do. It made your mind clear. It gave you the path. So you still got to take action. You still have to move forward. You still have to do those kind of things, but you're taking aligned action. You're taking inspired action. And so can you kind of talk about the balance between alignment and action and how they're really balanced together? Yeah, it's definitely all about balance. I don't think you can be in the how, like we said all the time, but you also can't just sit back and not do anything. You have to take that aligned action. And it's really about, finding the things that can move the needle the furthest and the shortest amount of time and really looking at those action steps. And for me, that was huge of like brain dumping everything out, right? Like I'm super creative. I can create for days. I can get lost in create and creativity and creation. And so I just dumped everything out and then looked at like, what's going to move the needle the furthest in the shortest amount of time. And that I, I do that almost every day. That's like a daily practice for me. When I look at my to-do list, I'm like, okay, what's going to move the needle the furthest today? And so for me, it's part of my daily practice. The other part really is asking myself this one question. And this was very life-changing, which is how are you downplaying your desires? Ooh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. You like that one? I it's do like huge- that a lot. It's a really great like journal prompt. It's a great thing to meditate on. If you're not into any of that, you can just think about it. You know, how are you downplaying your desires? And we tend to talk ourselves out of things. So I just taught a class all about unlocking the energy of money. It's such a powerful class. And I would start with people about like, where do you think you can make money? Like how much money can you make? Like just what's your first number? Because I'm telling you by the end of the class, you're going to go so far beyond that. Because what you think, like you, you'll you talk yourself out of it. If I said, Jake, you're going to make a gazillion dollars, you might be like, well, I mean, maybe, but I don't know. I mean, I don't, then I'd have to do this. And you start talking yourself out. Well, I don't know if I'm going to show up like that. What am I going to have to give up if I get that? You and I've had lots of conversations like this. What am I going to have to give up if I'm going to play like this? And so we downplay them like, for whatever reason, we're not going to be able to obtain them in the way that we think. And if we just start letting that expansion happen, 
what you find is that your desires come in in all different forms. So sometimes it's not about work. Sometimes what you cultivate in work then also fulfills another desire over here. Mm. And so that really allow, I, I do this almost weekly too. It's like, how am I downplaying myself this week? Like, where have I downplayed myself? Like, it's a really interesting question to explore because you find these little potholes of where you kind of shortchanged yourself. And if you're shortchanging yourself, everybody else is. That's huge. Why do you think that we downplay our desires? Because I think we all fear things. I mean, I think we're all, I mean, at the end of the day, when we strip all our titles away, we, we succumb to fear. I mean, mm. fear is huge and it's remembering to love. Like fear is huge. And we could get on a whole topic just about fear, but fear is huge. And what we're going to lose when we gain, oftentimes we think we have to lose something to gain something. And I think that can be incredibly powerful too and scary. It sometimes can be scary when you're out there starting a business or doing a business and thinking, okay, well, I'm going to have to give up these things. I know, you know, for me, mine was my family. I love being a mother. And I was really struggled in the beginning of, I'm not going to be able to be the mom that I want to be and run a business. And that was the biggest lie I told myself. And I constantly shortchanged myself and my clients because of that, this negative thought and this limiting belief, if we're going to label it that. And I think it's really powerful when you stop doing that and you really think, well, how am I downplaying that? How am I downplaying that desire? I really, you know, I want to cultivate this. It becomes about something more than you. I think that's what's so powerful about it is when you really allow it to flow through you, it becomes more than just about you and what you desire. It becomes about a community and a culture and that changes the motivation on every level on like a cellular level. Yeah, it's really interesting that you bring that up, that idea of what am I going to have to give up? This is actually now this is we're in a mastermind together. We'll be talking about this tomorrow uh, for everyone who's listening. But this concept of unlearning things, this has been a big thought that I've had recently. Something I've been dwelling on a lot is this idea that when I say unlearn things, it's, for example, something like in order for me to get that i'm going to have to give up this but there's no reason that that's true that's just the limitations that we're putting on something because for everyone who says in order to get this i'm going to have to give up that there's someone else who has done it without giving up that and it's just looking at it differently have you seen the movie apollo 13 have you seen that movie yeah so long ago though okay I mean, when it came I out in the answer 90s, a trivia question Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I love that movie. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Tom Hanks is absolutely incredible in it. Um, it is a, uh, yeah, it's just, just an incredible, incredible film, Ron Howard film. And when you, there's, there's one scene in that movie, the little section of the movie, this is when they're trying to get them down. They're trying to get them back. And what they say is basically they lay out, here's the problem that we have. And we need to get them back to earth. And all they have is this. And they had a box of stuff that were all of the items that they had kind of to their, to at, at their um, disposal right there in, in the ship up in space. So they had to solve that problem with the limitations that they put. Sometimes we talk about limitations as a bad thing. I actually like to put limitations I like to, to define my limitations as a positive. And what I mean by that is maybe rather than saying limitations, it's say boundaries. And it says, I want to achieve this without losing this, this, and that. So now I have a completely different question. You change your question, you change your life, you change your whole experience. And so like them with Apollo 13, it's not, how do we get them down? Well, we can get them down by doing all of these different things, but they don't have access to that. Here's what they have access to. And I think that if we start with the assumption that my only way to be successful is to give up this, this, and this, then we're only going to think of solutions that give us that success while giving these things up. But if we start with the question of how can I achieve that with maintaining these boundaries with the lifestyle that I want, then new solutions come to us. 
Oh, absolutely. That's called, you probably, I don't know if you know this, that's called value-based boundary setting where you like that. You make boundaries based off of what you value instead of what you fear. And then this Mm. is an energetic, absolute shift in any area of your life. And so oftentimes we are taught that boundaries are like, we're protecting something. Like there's a lot of fear and a lot of lack around it. Like, I don't want that. So I'm going to make a boundary right there. You're not going to cross that boundary because I don't want you to hurt me. So there, but what we're doing, if we're going kind of circling back here a little bit about energy and being in alignment is that you're actually drawing that more towards you because you're focusing on that. But when you say, I want to protect peace and love, or I want to build my business off of, you know, having all the time I want, I want a lot of freedom. Then you start cultivating that towards you and you're in alignment with that. So value-based boundary setting is huge. I only make boundaries now off of values because it's Mm. it's absolutely changed the way I show up. And what's interesting, I'm going to kind of bring this back to the whole, like, you know, limitation thing. I, sometimes I feel like limitations are just another way to judge. Mm. And I think like judgment is another form of addiction, especially in the culture that we're in now. Like we judge everything it's on social media. We, we just, we judge everything and judgment becomes this form of addiction and we get used to judging, judging, we get in this habit. And so it does, we show up and we're like, the first thing is we judge. We're like, Oh, well we go right into judgment. But when we learn to have like patience and like being, it's another form of faith. And I think that's huge, huge. I think that we judge as a protection. We judge things as a protection because Mm -hmm. a lot of times we say, oh, we shouldn't judge. And it's like, well, of course we do. We judge constantly. We judge that guy, that guy who is in the lane next to me. I'm judging that he's not. I don't know why I could say he's not paying attention. I could say he's looking at his phone. That's all an assumption. I don't know. But my judgment is this guy is kind of going over the line. He's coming over the line. So I want to be careful of that. That is judgment. There's a difference between making judgment in our lives to make the best decisions that we can and tearing people down to pull ourselves up. And that's what I think a lot of us do. We're judging others because it, it protects us. It makes us feel like, like success judging. How often do we throw rocks up and throw rocks up at people above us? I'm talking, to, I'm not talking about us, you and me, even though mm-hmm. of course we're humans too, but I'm saying <laughs> that, that as a society, it's something we do all the time. And I think it's just because it's easier for our ego to say, like you were talked about before, not wanting to give up time with your family, you go, well, you know what? Yeah, that person's really successful, but how much time do they spend with their family? I spend lots of time with my family. They go, you don't know that. Like, you don't know that, but we're trying to make the judgment because it somehow makes us feel better about, like you said, not getting what we want, downplaying the things that we desire. And we're saying, no, I, I don't need that because I have this, I don't need that. But it's like, I just think, we don't need to do that. We can have it all. It's possible. Absolutely. And I think it's so important. You and I actually have talked about this before, but you know, really when you find yourself in that place is what do you know about that part of yourself? Mm. What do you know about that part of yourself that self-sabotages is huge because that usually comes from some form of protection from so long ago that the story doesn't even really matter anymore in a like yes. in the sense of right here, right now. And when you can see that, oh, that person's here today and that protected me a long time ago and that served me and I'm grateful for that. But right here in this moment, it doesn't really apply. Like I'm okay. Right. I can keep going right. forward. I'm not going to lose that. But there is this like, person that shows up from a long time ago and like really knowing that person so that when you feel them show up, you can be like, Oh, that's just that person showing up. That's just, that's, that's the old person. I'm not that anymore, but she shows up every now and then she reminds me she's there. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, of course. (laughs) Earlier you mentioned something. I think it was really valuable. You talked about the gift of something not working. That is such a great frame of looking at things. Can you tell us more about the gift of not it not working specifically for that person who's listening or watching right now 
and is feeling that it's not working right now. How is that a gift to them? Oh, that I love this. Cause this, I think has been the greatest gift. I think I said this, like the gift of it not working allows you to just strip down and just be like one, what is working. And instead of being like, what's not working, it's more like, where do I need to show up authentically? You and I have had so many conversations about this really gets you down to you being authentically you. And when you can be like, I was doing all these things over here because I was told this was going to work. And maybe for some people it did. And maybe data can show that it does work for a lot of people, but that does not mean that it has to work for you. And learning that like your magic is exactly what the world needs. That Mm -hmm. is so incredibly powerful. And like really believing that, that we need you. They don't need me. They don't need another you. We need you. So whoever is listening and you feel like, no, it's just not working. I can't get it right. I don't have enough clients. I haven't made 30,000, blah, blah, blah. Please like, let's let that go and be like, how can you show up more authentically you? Because that's the magic, whatever that is. That is the magic. You are the magic all the time. You are the magic. When I work with leaders and I have worked with leaders and have these cohorts of leaders that we talk about, we call it lead from the soul. And that's it. It's like, what is authentically you? You don't want to be on social media. Okay. Where do you want to show up? You don't want to have an email list. Okay, fine. How can you connect with people? I mean, really allowing yourself, especially if you um, have any sort of, I'm not going to say learning disability, but if you've learned different, then you think outside the box, use that to your strength of like, how can I expand on that? Like, where is my magic showing up? Because I bet you there's clues out there that your magic has been showing you up and like leaving you little crumbs. And like, just waiting for you to take little nibbles out of it. You start to really tap into that. Tap in means getting quiet and going inward. Then you're going to like really, all of a sudden it will start to kind of click for you. And then that how comes of, well, my magic I'm using myself, right? Is energy and connecting with people very quickly on an energetic level. So I can use that. People love when I speak, which, you know, for me, I couldn't even have done this interview (laughs) two years ago, I had to work with a coach to learn how to speak, but I was hearing like, you need to speak more. You need to speak more. And I was like, Oh my God. You know, my soul was like, Oh, that's amazing. My mind was like, um, no, we're not speaking. That's not what we're doing. But I had, so I had to work through that. So for anybody who's listening to anything and you're getting any little nudge, just lean into that. Cause that's where the magic is. Mm. What, what is different about your mindset today compared to a year and a half, year and a half ago, when it comes to your mindset towards business, towards success, towards, um, you know, sales, money, all those kinds of things. What's your mindset? What is different today compared to a year and a half ago when you were starting? Mm, That's a good question. Um, one, anything is possible. Anything, Mm. anything, anything is possible. Um, if you listen to anything, any documentary about anybody talking, I actually just watched the Bobby Brown special last night on A&E. So good, by the way. So mm-hmm. good. And he was talking about how when they were in new edition um, and he would tell the guys like, we're going to be on soul train. We're going to be on soul train. And the guys were like, eh. and then he, they ended up going on soul train and then he won an award on the soul train awards show. Think about all those things that you're like, eh. That could never happen, but right. anything is possible to me. That's huge. And two, less is more, mm-hmm. less is more, less is more. There's so much value and just showing up in the capacity that you have is exactly what the world needs. You don't need to do it all. And I think that to me has been life-changing. It's just less is more, less is more. Why do you think that people try to do more and more and more. Someone will be in a situation where they're not having the success that they want. And instead of doing what you're saying, less is more, focus on one thing, do it really well, do it thoroughly, those kind of things. They'll start seven different projects or seven different ways instead of just doing one well. Why do you think we do that? I think overdoing is the part of ourselves that needs outside validation that I'm not enough, 
I'm not enough. I'm not succeeding fast enough. I'm, I'm not enough. And so I'm going to do more to prove to you that I am more my audience. Yes. This happens in relationships all the time. You see this, someone shows up, but I'm doing all the things I'm doing all the things. I don't know why they don't love me. And it's like, you're almost suffocating the process. The same thing happens in business. It's like, you're suffocating the process. It's like that part of you that's always trying to do more is like that overcompensating that I'm just not enough in me, the magic of me, you know? And when we can be like, no, this is enough. It, it is, you show up then authentically and I am enough. I am enough. That's amazing. That's yeah. I, I think that that's a big thing that, that idea of like validation, um, mm-hmm. I also think a lot of it has to do with when, when you were talking about being in alignment, uh, co-creating, I I think that that requires a lot of faith Mm -hmm. that requires a lot of faith because it requires us to trust our intuition inside, to trust that Mm -hmm. belief, because now we need to go and take that leap of faith, that step forward, but to do something thoroughly, to do something well, usually I'm not going to say all the time because remember anything's possible. So I'm not going to say all the time, but usually doing something well means letting go of something else most of the time and letting go of something else can be scary when you go. Yeah, but I don't have confidence that either of these things are going to work. So I'm just going to work really hard at all of them so that one of them could work. And I think that most of the time, let's say 80% of the time when someone's burned out from their business, it's it's not that they have too many things to do um, or certainly not too many effective things to do. It's that they are trying so many things. They're doing so many things in an attempt to make up for the fact that they don't actually believe that any of them are going to work. And so they go, well, you know what? If I go all in with all of these things at the same time, one of them's got to work. But if I don't have confidence, I don't want to give up on on some of those things. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that that concept, that idea? Yeah, um, I think that's what a lot of people do. So we end up spreading ourselves too thin. And I think most, most, I'm not all right, but most successful people and success is loosely here, right? Based on your definition of success have figured out how to manage their energy, the most effective so that you're not burnt out because this, any business, it doesn't matter what business you're in. You can get burnt out so quickly because you can try to do all the things because especially in the beginning, it's challenging to believe that you are enough because you are looking for that outside validation of like, I'm enough. I booked a client. I'm enough. I booked a podcast. I'm enough. And you're looking for these outside like little hits that validate that you are enough. But when you get that quiet feeling, like we were talking about in the beginning of like, what am I doing? You know, what is this? What is my greater mission? Getting quiet, really understanding that and knowing that like, this is not about me, but of me it changes the perspective and you don't have to do it all. You get to go inside and connect with how I get to show up is like this. And this is enough because I can feel that. And what will happen is then you'll get the validation. You usually, you just have to validate yourself first. You're the biggest cheerleader. You're the biggest team. You know, I was a high school cheerleading coach. Yes. Yes. (laughs) You're your biggest cheerleader. Yes. (laughs) I, I, What are your thoughts on this? I think that the most important thing is to be that cheerleader, is to be that cheerleader for yourself and continue to cheer yourself on. But what the skeptic will say to that is, oh, that's just Pollyanna. That's just positive thing. You got to be a realist. Uh, what, What do you say to that person on that comment that you made about being your biggest cheerleader? If someone says, well, no, I, I would rather be a realist. What, what do you say to that person? I don't even know what a realist means. I'm going to be honest. Like I hear that word and I'm like, what does that even mean? Like, you know, I think for me personally, it means that having that self-belief and the self-confidence and the self-trust, huge mm-hmm. self-trust that I can go forward and that everything is for my greater good. 
So this isn't about whether my business fails or my business succeeds, but this journey that I'm on is for the greater good of me. And then if 10 years or three years, I wasn't a coach that I would know that like that, this process is taking me somewhere else, somewhere deeper, somewhere more robust. So trusting that everything that I go through in life, even those moments that are not great are meant for the greater good. And believe me, I've had to say this many times to myself when I, you know, we've talked about getting down to $53 in my bank account, like really knowing like $53 is for my greater good, $53 is for my greater good. They have to have that. You have to have that trust of like, this is, this is something deeper than just for me. And most people, especially when you're going into entrepreneurship, there is something that's moving you, that's driving you, that's like almost pulling you forward. And it's like this momentum. And we talk a lot about this momentum, like riding that momentum, like a wave, like you ride this momentum of I'm being pulled, I'm being called, some people will call it, to do something better, to do something greater, to change the world in this manner. And that can be systems, it can be spiritual, it can be guidance, it can be books, whatever it is, that that feeling, that's not about you anymore, then that's of you. And so you know that there is greater good, there's greater good coming from this. And so those moments where you are like, Oh my God, I need to look for a job. How many times did I say that to you? Oh, I need to look for a job. I think I need to look for a job. <laughs> Jake, I think I'm gonna, I, Jake, I applied for a job today. What? Um, you know, <laughs> I didn't get hired by anybody, by the way. The, the universe was well, working good. in my favor. Good. Yeah, they were like, no, you're no, not getting yeah. hired. You have, you have other things to do. But knowing that, knowing that I have to take aligned action and really mm. keep things for the greater good and just keep getting back. I Sometimes I think people think this means that I'm in alignment all the time. I am not. I am not in alignment all the time. I fall off constantly where I'm like, Crick. but when I have this alignment, what happens is it enables me to get up quicker. And I think that's the real secret of it is like, it allows you to really jump back on quicker because I fall off all the time. And so do other people. And it's just knowing like, oh, okay, all right. There was that part that wanted to self-sabotage me. I spent a week thinking about all the things I did wrong. Okay. Now I need to get back because I know what my greater good is. I know what the greater goal is, the alignment. And then you get back quicker. That's what mm. really this is about is keeping you just on track of your greatest desires. Like we were talking about, you know, not downplaying right. yourself. I love that idea. So we just have a few more minutes left and okay. until the, the we're out of time here. This time is whew, gone by so, so quickly. Um, what, what are your last pieces of advice? Or let's just say this. Say someone comes to you and says, I'm just starting out as a coach. I'm just starting out in business. What do I do? What, what, what's most important to them in, in your mind? What's the most important thing for them to focus on as they get started on this journey? Uh, figuring out your why. Mm-hmm. This is huge. You know, I spoke about this at your yeah. your stuff before. This to me is a huge passion of mine with leaders. I've actually sp- spoken many times about this one thing, which is, you know, why does it matter? Why does it matter to you? Not about anybody else. And you don't ever have to share it with anybody, but why does it matter? And it's not what you think it is. I can tell you that the first time you answer that question for anybody who's journaling this, the first time you answer the question, I would tell you, go deeper, keep going deeper. It takes about seven. Didn't you call it seven layers? Why dip? I think you coined this phrase. I think so. I think I said that at the event because I was talking about, okay, so why does it matter to you? And then once someone says, well, this matters, well, freedom and go great. Why does freedom matter to you? And you keep asking why. I find that you seven is just kind of a number, but when it comes down to it, you you keep asking why until the person gets emotional and, and not that I'm trying to make people cry, but at the (laughs) same time, you want to get down to the point to where it's not just surface, because when you get down to that real level where it strikes a quarter that they don't have to be emotional in that way, but to where you can really feel that. Okay, now that's it. That's why it matters to you. I can see that. And that's going to drive you because the truth is, is look, right now, what, what, for those of you listening, what Michelle has said is you're probably thinking, well, this seems like it's been easy for her, or this seems like it's been 
uh, you know, not that many bumps on the road and those kind of things. Michelle has done a great job and, and things have been, have worked out so well for her, but it doesn't mean that there weren't hard times on that path. For every one of us, there's going to be dark night, dark nights of the soul. And the truth is, is those dark nights of the soul, that's usually like Michelle talked about the gift of it not working. Cause when we have that thing, I don't remember who originally said this, but when, uh, when we win, we tend to party. When we lose, we ponder. And sometimes that pondering, that, that quote unquote losing is the most important gift that we can have because you just go on winning. We get into this place where we go, I don't really need to work harder at this. I don't really need to get better because it's just happening. It's just, it's just moving forward. And it's so important that we get into a place where we understand what that why is so that we have that fuel to keep going no matter what comes up and no matter what gets in the way. Absolutely. I mean, it's the anchor. I think it's, it's the anchor that puts everything in motion. It gives you the stability to fly. And I think that's huge. Like it really allows you then to fly and dream and desire and create and knowing that this is my why. And, you know, when we first started, my why was something very simple. It was like, oh, I want my kids to know that, you know, you can do this. And then as we took it deeper, it really became more about saving lives, you know, and knowing that like, I'll never have to rely on anybody ever again. It creates a very, my own safety. I mean, these things are huge and for everybody, it's their own thing. So I think to me, that's always where we start is why does this matter? I love that. I love that. Michelle, uh, this conversation has been fascinating, fantastic. It's gone by so quickly. Uh, but for everyone who wants to know more about you and learn more about what you do, what's the best best place to get in touch with you? Um, at my website, cloud nine life coaching, the number nine. So cloud nine, the number nine life coaching.com. Thank you awesome. so much for having me. Oh, it's been awesome. I love the way that you think. And I want to take a moment to acknowledge you and, and someone who's had the opportunity to work with you as a coach um, over the last year and a half. What I have seen above everything, above anything, yes, there's been implementation. There's been the ability to go forward and do the work. But I think the thing that has made you successful has been the humility to be able to see something not working and being okay to face it. I think that's something that is quite rare is, hey, this isn't working. That doesn't mean that it's not going to work. That doesn't mean that I'm a failure. It doesn't mean that it's it's doomed or it's a sign. But to be able to face it and say, this isn't working. And why? And now we can look at it and find something. And that refinement of just going forward and forward and forward, that's what's got you to where you are now. And this is only just the beginning. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I appreciate this. I receive all those kind words. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure being coached by you. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Michelle. We have uh, an official ending on the mountaintop motivation podcast, and that is a virtual fist bump. So first, I just want to say, Michelle, thank you so much for being here. This has been great. We're going to end right here with the virtual fist bump. Put it Ready? up. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for listening to this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something great out of it. And most importantly, I hope that you're going to implement something that you learned in this episode because nothing happens until you take action. If you're a six or seven figure entrepreneur who's looking to up level your network with a group of people who also have a rising tide lifts all boats attitude, then come and join our exclusive network of successful entrepreneurs by going to mtmsuccess.com slash rising tide.